Hi, I'm Russ of Aquarium X Pets, and today's video is from day two of my amazing Arizona bugging trip with Sky Island Adventures. Make sure to catch my video about day one if you haven't already. Our first destination for day two was an area thick with Choya and Opuntia cacti. Peter, John, and I were in search of the cactus longhorn beetle. A lot of you are probably familiar with the Choya cactus skeletons, which are used as decor in aquariums, desert vivariums, and even as chew toys for pet rodents. But some of you may not have any idea what the living plant actually looks like. So let's take a look at it in its various stages, from the full plant to its flowers, and this partially decayed specimen, to a weathered bit of Choya skeleton that may look a little more familiar. This plant is sometimes nicknamed the Jumping Choya, and as I discovered firsthand, there's a reason for that. Small detached portions of the cactus somehow seem to launch themselves at us as we walk through the area. We had tongs with us to better access the beetles we were looking for, and these also came in handy for removing choya spines from our pants and our shoes as well. As I said, we were in search of a large, interesting beetle species, the cactus longhorn beetle. It wasn't long before we began spotting them. Peter has found the first Cactus longhorn beetles, here's one of them right here, perched on the choya. See if we can uh, tease it out without getting choyified. This has to be one of the best pet beetles. Um, in fact, you could, you could title a whole video about that because that's your thing, the, the best pet invertebrate. Um, for the size and just look at the foot pads on that thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the uh, stripes in the antennae mm -hmm. and then those two thorns right there. Um, I mean, and it's so protected by that choya plant right there. I, this is a big obvious insect out here in the desert. I mean, yeah. there, there are things that want to eat this, but not badly enough to venture into the choya for it. Um, but in, uh, in captivity as pets, they just eat the prickly pear pads, which are readily available at a lot of supermarkets. Um, you can also order them rather easily on eBay or Amazon. I think it's like three pads for five bucks or something like that. Um, and that's really all they need. A lot of people will do planted tinks with the uh, prickly pears, um, but uh, they chew through them pretty good and really easy to reproduce in captivity. Uh, you just put a little sand down in the bottom of the tank and they will uh, deposit eggs that are coated with sand. Put a little water on that after a couple weeks and they hatch out pretty nicely. And uh, the larvae eat the exact same prickly pear that the adults do and are really easy to raise in that way. Um, they do have a good bite on them. Um, you can see that the oh. mandibles there, yeah. pretty sizable, um, but uh, pretty disinclined to bite if you're just holding it on your hand. Of course, this one's a little agitated now because I'm, I'm holding it in, in a strange way. Cactus longhorn beetles, genus Monolema. Probably Monolema gigas on this one here. That's the most common one. And this is a this is a nice sized one here too. Fun find. Later that day, it was time to meet up with a larger group, including Jesse from Shapes in Nature. Jesse is not only an amazing nature artist, he designed this shirt, for example. He also works with Peter Clausen of Bugs in Cyberspace and Sky Island Adventures. In addition to Peter and Jesse, Aaron, Larry, Kristen, and Courtney were all there as well. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's incredibly fun to get together with a group of people who are just as excited about creatures as I am. The plan for the evening, in addition to a barbecue, was to look for various arthropods in the area around Jesse's house. We were also planning on doing some more black lighting, although this time we'd be in Jesse's yard and plugged into the grid so there was no need for a generator. As we were talking in front of the house long before it got dark, I saw something moving along the ground some distance away, but it wasn't moving like any creature I had ever seen. Intrigued, I approached, and to my delight, it was a pair of dung beetles. Although dung beetles do occur in my state, I had never seen them going about their business like this before. This is so cool. Is canthon? Yep, it's canthon. Oh, yeah, it's the, the metallic green nice. canthon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. That evening, this male Arizona blonde tarantula also came right up onto the patio. I had never met a wild tarantula this close up before. 
Jesse introduced me to this one very carefully so as not to stress it, and then we let it go about its business, which was, no doubt, to find a female of the species. After Jesse's fantastic burgers, it was soon time for blacklighting. Some of the highlights of the blacklighting experience this evening included this native mantis. I think it's uh, uh, either, I think it might be Thesprotia. Thesprotia. Is that, is that a native yeah. mantis? Cool. Yeah. Um, you won't see any non-native ones down here. Um, it could also be uh, this canto. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, is that a male? Yeah, oh yeah, it's definitely yeah, it's gotta be because it's so... I shouldn't say definitely, I think it is. Um, that might be the one uh, Loki was telling me about. Um, he's gonna be down here in a few days, too. Um, that hunts by stabbing. Oh, spearing, yeah. Yeah, rather than capturing it. It's kinda looked like what it's doing, it's like it's got a oh, yeah, yeah. stand on yeah. there, and that's awesome. There were also a large number of mantispids, which are an amazing example of convergence with the mantids. They are neuropterans, like ant lions, lacewings, and owl flies, but they have the predatory habits, the raptorial forelegs, and a head structure uncannily like mantids. They appeared in good numbers at the blacklight, but they were a little difficult to film. Either the camera, or my headlamp, maybe both, seemed to disturb many of them, but some sat still for a little while, especially when they were focused on snacking on other insects that had come to the blacklight. As I mentioned, we also took several small forays to see some other creatures, and I'm really excited to tell you about what we found. But before I do that, I want to take a few seconds to thank my patrons at Patreon. Live streams are a great way to interact directly with you, my viewers, and one way I like to thank my patrons for their support is to respond directly to their questions during those live streams. Patrons can post questions in advance on Patreon, so whether or not they make it to the live streams, I make sure to address those questions in the video. If you'd like to support Aquarimax Pets for as little as a dollar per month, please click the link at the end of the video or in the description. And I'd just like to point out that as of the recording of this video, the most recent patrons to join are Jim and his eight-year-old son Maverick, who keeps his very own pet isopods. I think that's awesome, Maverick. Keep up the good work. So, now let's talk about some of the creatures I found while looking around the area of Jesse's house. There were several more tarantulas, and most of them were males, but we did see one female who had somewhat unusually retreated head first into her burrow entrance. We also encountered some arthropods I had never seen in the wild before this evening. On one of our headlamp hikes, we expected to see a lot of vinegaroons as they are plentiful in the area, but perhaps the recent rains had discouraged them a little bit. At first, I wasn't sure we would see any, but then Jesse spotted this little one. Yeah, that's what we were out here I thought for. it was a cricket for a minute, and I was like, oh, that's not a cricket. That is the first wild vinegaroon I've ever seen. Oh, that's amazing. Well, wild in the wild. Yeah. It's so tiny. Now, I'd like to show you what was, in my opinion, the most fantastic arthropod of the evening. Peter and I took a short hike along a wash to flip a few items, and when I flipped a moderately large log, <laughs> look at what I found. Scolopendra hiros, the largest, and in my opinion, the most beautiful centipede in the USA. Just look at these colors. Absolutely gorgeous. Peter carefully wrangled the centipede out from under the log, and in this video sequence, John is holding it on a piece of wood so that I could get some good photos and video. You may notice that it has a damaged antenna and a couple of legs, which John mentioned was likely due to the very high amount of moisture in the area at the time. Fortunately, both the legs and the antenna can regenerate over time. We spotted the last creature of the evening on the drive home. These were the largest creatures on my Arizona must-see list. They crossed right in front of the car, and too bad I wasn't ready with my phone at the time. Fortunately, Peter handed me his headlamp, 
and circled around the park and we were able to get the footage of the three javelinas, also known as peccaries. Though pig-like in appearance, these creatures are an entirely different family from the old world pigs. Thanks again to Sky Island Adventures. Day two was fantastic. If you'd like to experience the arthropods and other creatures of Arizona with Sky Island Adventures, check out the link in the description. What was your favorite creature featured in day two? Please let me know in the comments. And if you haven't seen day one, you won't want to miss it. Keep an eye out for day three of this adventure as well. Thanks for watching today. For more videos about aquarium and vivarium pets, as well as adventures encountering such creatures in the wild, make sure to subscribe. And then tap the bell and choose notifications all so you won't miss my next video. There, there's one right there. Yep, got the eye shine and everything. And it relaxed. And mm -hmm. He knows it's good. home with daddy. Did you just say he knows it's home with daddy? Yes. <laughs> Papa. It's home with daddy. <laughs>